can't ever wait. I'm so impatient. Do I do it like this? Is that okay? Is that acceptable? Ugh, I guess not. Welcome back. I hope we are well. I'm filming at night time. It get, it's getting darker a lot earlier these days. So that's my excuse. So get cozy, grab a hot drink, get a blanket. I don't know. Do what the F you want. It's time for some feelings and favourites. So what's been going on? Uh, last time I did this was end of August. It's been September. We're now in October. One of the best seasons, best months. Other than February, because that's when I was born. No, I'm joking. I love this time of year. It's, it's, it's great. I love the festivities. I love Halloween. I love... I just love it. I'm really excited about this month. I've got loads of ideas and plans. Where to start? Let's start with what's been going on. Life update, how I've been feeling, and then we'll move on to some cool stuff in a minute. First things first, I'm gonna get the awkward bit out of the way because it's just, I, I feel like I could just carry on after this. So this is probably the part of being an online personality and my job, as it were, that I hate the most. And that is that I have to, because I vlog and because my thing is about my everyday life, I have to share personal stuff probably more than I'd like to. Obviously, I choose to show you my life, but it also means I have to talk about things that are sometimes quite difficult or sometimes quite awkward. And sometimes I don't really want to have to, but I kind of have to because then you guys know. And if there's any awkward questions, it's kind of like, well, I did tell you or it's there if you need an explanation. Imagine going for a shit time or something bad happens in your life and then you have to repeat yourself to like loads of different people and just keep retelling the story or be keep reminded of it like anyway 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 oh my god anyway um basically uh, and it's not like terrible it's just I just gotta let you guys know my boyfriend um has moved out we're still together it's just how do I put this Obviously, I've been sharing my experiences through lockdown and how things have been going, etc. And it's been good. I've been like riding the wave and just seeing where it goes and just sort of going with it in making the most of a shit situation, basically. But I feel it's sort of because it was a very intense beginning to our relationship, i.e. we were dating and then all of a sudden, bam, you're in lockdown together. You're like living together intensely. And we've been living together for six months now. Um, I think I've spoken about this before because of obviously we were sort of cheated out of a normal beginning of a relationship. It got intense quite quickly. I mean, things have been fine and we've been getting on fine. We've not had any arguments or anything, but basically we just sort of decided it would be good to have a little bit of space from one another. Again, not because we've not been getting on, but just it sort of dawned on us just how intense it got quite quickly. And it's almost a bit like whiplash. We're like, fuck, this happened, oh my God. A positive step for us would be to somewhat resume where we left off before COVID. It's, it's kind of complicated, it's kind of not. It's not a big deal. We are still very much into one another. We sort of said it's like moving sideways, not backwards. I just had to get it off my chest because obviously I vlog every day and he's not gonna be here every day. He's gonna be here a, a, a few a couple few times a week like with my past experiences and um, I don't want any awkward questions and yeah um and before anybody and before anyone says I told you so that's what you get what do you expect just bear in mind that everybody's relationships are different um never compare your relationships to online to your friends to your parents like nothing is ever black and white and everybody everybody reacts differently everybody is different like every relationship is personal so you know this is uh, this is different this is something that is happening and i i personally i'm i'm remaining positive and anyone's got any negative opinion or wants to be smug about this i really couldn't give two shits but i just thought i'd update you on that side of my life obviously after lockdown people going back to work uh everything has been picking up and it's been re i'll tell you what at first it was really difficult for me to get back in the zone like have my routine back and just go from being it's weird like i went from working from working from home to being in lockdown and not really doing much and being like cooped up with my new boyfriend which was kind of nice but you know and then sort of oh wait everyone's going back to work now so you need to just start working it was it's just really difficult to just because i'm in the same location nothing's changed here and 
it's just been hard to like get up and go, get the motivation to do stuff. And I really struggled with that from the beginning, but I've, I've done a 180, man. Like I have set myself some goals, some boundaries, some discipline. Um, I give myself like a little manageable schedule to do every single day. Basically, I've told myself my working hours is like 10 till six, seven o'clock. And so I need to be doing something either creative or at my desk by 10 o'clock in the morning. Having that focus also helps me stop from procrastinating, from fucking about. Like I need these little time slots in which I tell myself stuff's gonna be done. I book in a, boot, a morning boot camp like every morning pretty much now, apart from a Wednesday, it's my day off. Um, just because that gets me out of bed. Eat, and it's harder even because it's getting darker, but it just keeps me going. Um, it makes me feel good as well and just gets me out of bed. I feel like if you just, oh, I've got a really bad back. Rather than just laying in bed and not really giving myself a reason to get up, like obviously I work for myself, so there's no real set time to start. Like I don't have to be somewhere. But when I do something, i.e. an exercise class that has a start time, I have to get up and go to it. So that's really helped. Yeah, and also putting the phone down, not scrolling on social media as much. I have been pretty bad for that, but doing like a little digital detox every now and then, that's been well good. But I've been feeling so much better about my like work life and my motivation and being productive and just being a bit more disciplined Um, sort of basically kicking my own ass. Feeling good about that. Another thing that I've been sort of like processing and thinking about recently I, I briefly touched upon this on an Instagram post just being very honest and just my general opinion of the internet as a whole as of late and how difficult it can be at times it's quite difficult being a creator or an influencer at the moment feeling like you're under quite a lot of scrutiny judgment negativity I don't know and this isn't this isn't me just sitting here having a bitch or a moan about it this is me reflecting on personal experiences but also talking to other creators or influencer friends of mine that are going through the same thing and who all seem to be kind of struggling with this at the moment now we all know this year hasn't been particularly easy for anybody and I know I know a lot of stuff has happened this year but particularly being online at some times feels like you're under like a microscope as it were and god I, I hate I kind of hate talking about this because it makes me feel like I'm moaning or that I'm ungrateful but it's not that how do I put this basically people these days I feel and and for me particularly it's on YouTube no offense on YouTube I feel that it feels different and a lot of other creators have said it i know a couple of people that fucking quit youtube completely because they just can't deal with it it's just as there just seems to be a there just seems to be kind of people on here that they like to pick at what you do they like to pass judgment and i've been feeling a lot that no matter what i upload there's always going to be something or something i've done or something i've said something someone's not disagreed with Every single upload, there's always something that someone has to pick at. It's frustrating because even though there's not many of those comments, they always get loads of likes and loads of people chiming in on the thread. And it makes me feel a little bit overwhelmed and a little bit defeated and a bit deflated. And I lose faith in myself. I have a lot of self-doubt. I question myself. I start to kind of by believe what people are saying about me and therefore feel like I'm being sort of pushed in a little corner and I can't be myself. I'm just scared of fucking up or saying something wrong. And basically what's happening is A, it's giving me a lot of anxiety and worry, but B, I'm just watering myself down online now. Louise Pentland, Sprinkle of Glitter, she touched upon this in one of her recent videos and she managed to articulate this point very, very well. Um, and I even actually messaged her, we had a conversation about like, you basically said exactly how I feel. At first I thought it was just me. I thought I was being really sensitive. I thought that, oh my God, what am I doing? Maybe I just shouldn't bother because I'm clearly, or maybe I'm just not smart enough anymore. Maybe I'm just so out of touch. Maybe I just don't know how to be a person anymore. I should just quit. But it wasn't until I realized that a lot of other people feel the same way, that I didn't feel so alone anymore, that I wasn't being sensitive. And also just admitting that my skin's not as thick as it used to be. And that's just so true. People see influencers now as like icons in the respect that they 
they are expected to be the best version of society and obviously I mean I hate being called an influencer because it makes me feel that it makes it seem like my like the people that watch me kind of influent influent influential influenceable that's what's that word I'd like to think that people that follow me have their own opinion and can make their own decisions and if I'm promoting something that I like it's their choice to buy that or not and when you say an influencer it makes it seem like the people that are watching are easily influenced. So it makes me feel that if I do something that not everybody agrees with and then someone says, oh, it's your responsibility of an influencer to do a X, Y, and Z. There are things that I stand by and I believe in and I like talking about. There's things I like to make content on. And just because some just because I'm not creating content on this cause, that cause, or that doesn't mean I don't care about it. It just means that my I don't use my platform for that. And I also find it really frustrating when people tell me how to use my platform. I, to be honest, I'm, I'm here for just your entertainment. I'm here for fashion stuff, inspo, makeup stuff, lifestyle vlogs and escapism and entertainment. And you know, there's certain topics that I really am passionate about, so therefore we'll talk about. But I think one thing that I'm really, cause obviously I've just been feeling so anxious about it and so, defeated I think one thing that I keep telling myself is not it's, it's okay if people don't always agree with you or it's okay if people don't like you because at the end of the day like if you don't like something I do you don't like something about me or I'm not good enough or I'm not fulfilling you enough or I'm not doing something that you want me to do then it's easy just don't follow me or find someone else that does tick those boxes for you and yeah I should stop trying to be liked by everyone or feeling like I need to be liked by everyone because I saw that as another quote um stop trying to be liked by everybody because you don't even like everybody which is so true I think also that this that is just it can apply to anybody I think a lot of people that I know are scared to post certain things online at the moment they're scared of people coming at them calling them out um just even if you're not an influencer or whatever or have a following like I think generally people feel a bit anxious online because they're scared of backlash or people just messaging them or dming them something that they've done wrong or I don't agree with this why are you doing that I think everybody's a bit like anxious about it but I think people need to stop being so judgmental and opinionated and feeling like they have to voice everything that comes into their brain. When did everybody get so entitled? That's what I wanna know. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you don't like the fact that I bought a HelloFresh box. Basically, verbal diarrhea, the fact that I have acknowledged and processed these thoughts, I've talked about it with other people, I've sort of told myself, given myself these lessons and spoken about shit. I feel a lot better. So I am going to be more myself on here and I'm going to stop trying to water myself down. I'm going to stop worrying that I'm not smart enough or good enough or, or, or like good enough for this platform anymore because I think I am. Generally, I've been okay. <laughs> I've had a quite an active month of September. I went to Wales. I did a day in London. Um, I've been planning my single launch from my new band Sunny Bone. So if you don't already follow us, go ahead and follow us on Instagram. We are launching some new music at the end of this month. Um, I've been planning the music video uh, um, and we've been doing some shoots and stuff. And yeah, it's really, really fun. I was teaching Phil bass. Life is strange, isn't it? Life is a roller coaster. Just got to ride it. Or as Forrest Gump would say, uh, life's like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get. So that's sort of sh the shit that's been going on, really. Ah, my bloody back! Um, some favourites of mine? Obviously the new sofa. If you've not, if, if, <laughs> if you haven't realised already, I got a new sofa. Not like I've been banging on it about it enough as it is. Loaf sofa, it's a clever velvet in, in mouse grey. Dogs aren't allowed on it. I love it. It just fits the space so well. I was contemplating about it for three years, but it, it fits my living room absolutely perfectly. Like this sofa was made for my house. It's really deep, like a bed. It's like a single bed. I'm not even joking. The width or depth of this bed is like a single bed. And um, you can spoon on it. I had a lovely spoon the other night on here. Um, I slept on it as well. I napped on it. Um, yeah, perfect for movies. I'm loving it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy with it. So obviously that's number one. Gross. The first thing that I want to talk about is this from Ritual. It's a room spray. It's fucking amazing. It's like 
called Black Oud. It's an oriental woody perfume for elegant and special atmosphere. It makes me feel, it smells like a fancy boutique hotel. And I spray it on the furniture, on the curtains, especially if I've had a bit of a clean, a little spruce up. It's perfect for just making the place smell so fucking great. If you like masculine, woody, smoky, intense smells, you'll you'll go wet at the fanny for that. Another one is a candle. <sighs> London Brick, I think it's called by Dixon. Basically, this candle, I'll put the link in it, they're a little bit pricey, but this really fills the room out with the most incredible smell. Again, it's really intense, deep smell, but it, it it's it's called I think it is called London Brick, but that's exactly how you would expect like a traditional classic London not the gross smelling London, like not like egg, but like that kind of mm, England, mm, brick, mm, rain, mm, smoke, mm, oh, a little bit of like fanciness. Oh, it's just so nice. Another thing that I've really liked have been my vans, <laughs> my man, flame print vans. Just think they're really cool, epic. Skater boy, like a bit blink one eight two. Anything with flames on, I'm a huge fan of. And in fact, my nails on September, which were these flame print ones, absolute winner winner chicken dinner. I got so many compliments for them. Also, it's my dream to own an old vintage muscle car, like a Dodge or a something Mustang or something along those lines. An old one, black with flames at the side, completely tasteless and tacky and but epic and I need, I, I want that in my life. I want it. So I can't have wheels with flames on, so I'll have shoes with flames on because they both get these places. The Body Shop CBD range, real nice. This is the Soothing Oil Balm Cleansing Mask. I've been using this every day. Normally I use it in the morning so when I wash my face. Um, you have to leave it on for five, three to five minutes, so I'll just like brush my teeth or make a cup of tea or something. Put it on, leave it on for a little bit, then you wash it off. It makes my face feel really clean and soothing and calm afterwards. There's also a oil, a face oil, and a moisturiser that goes in this range, which I've got, and I'm a big fan of it, so yeah. My, my skincare routine is pretty basic, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't really require too much. I'm blessed. Thank, thank you, Sue. I just get sometimes breakouts on my chin when I'm hormonal. Um, my period's in seven days, so this will explain some things. Sometimes it gets a bit dry, but generally it's quite easy to look after, so I don't go crazy with the skincare, because that's a fucking point. But this stuff is gorgeous. I usually use a cleansing oil and a face wash, and then a moisturiser. Next, I've got two palettes that I want to talk about. First one is the Stoned Palette from Herm and Decay. Oh, that was upside down. The Stoned Palette from Herm and Decay. The Stoned Palette from Herm and Decay! Not good. I've got it on my eyes tonight, actually. I don't know if you can tell, but it's gorgeous. It's got four matte colours, neutrals, pretty much, and then these incredible sparkly numbers in the middle there. I've used it flipping loads. It's great because the matte colours are just great. They'll do the job for any look, really. They're just great. It's neutral, good for smoking out, good for something subtle. And then the glitters, they're just so glittery and sparkly and they work amazing. You can dampen them or wet them with like setting spray and it makes them more pow and more like a glittery liner if you've got like a thin enough brush. Um, you could use the glitters on their own on your eye, like just a one sweeping glitter across the whole lip or you can mix it up a bit. Um, it's just a really fun planet to, planet, <laughs> palette to play with. The Lita palette from KVD, Cap, formerly Kat Von D, but she, don't, she ain't part of that anymore. Lolita. I've got I've fallen back in love with this and I've used it quite a lot recently. It's just great for this time of year as well. It's got the lovely orange tones, some glitters, and then obviously the kind of smoky pinks in there. So you can it's got a real lovely array of like autumnal tones in here, and then the glitters and the metallics are just fucking excellent. Um a really beautiful array of colours. I really recommend this as like a must-have palette as well. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, this coat, I need to just shout out about. A few people messaged me in my DMs like, where's that coat from when I've been wearing it on my Instagram story? It's ASOS. It's like fleecy, sheepy fleece. It's got some pockets, like utility pockets, 
and this hood and it is absolutely great it's really warm i've got a big pocket there i think i got it in a large size just so it was extra snuggly um it's just a great coat i always i'm always bezzing about in this it's so warm and it's quite on trend like i'm wearing a puffer coat am i cool am i down with the kids oh music i've really loved Haley blay she's also an, an awesome youtuber her new single oh, well good I uh, love her music. I just love her. She's just awesome. But I don't know why. I didn't even realise she was on Spotify. Ugh. But yeah, been listening to that non-stop every single day. Be Your Own Muse. Excellent song. Jamie Woon Night Air has been a favourite of mine this month as well. Really banging song. And then 911 by Lady Gaga has also been on repeat. I like if you listen to the album, the track before, if, like seamlessly goes into 911. I love that, it got me tingling. Films, Peanut Butter Falcon, that's a really epic film. It's about a, a man, a young man with Down syndrome. He escapes his care home. He wants to become a wrestler. So he goes on, he goes on the run, trying to find this wrestling school. But he, he just he happens to cross paths with Shia LaBeouf, who is a bit of a rumman. He's a bit of a naughty boy, sailor, fisherman. And they basically cross paths and go on this journey together and they become best of buds. I cried, it was beautiful, really heartwarming film. Um, also, King of Staten Island, amazing film, really great character building, and also it, it, it's a funny, it's funny because it's the main character you're so conflicted with because he's so useless, you want to hate him, you want to just shout at him, just sort your fucking life out, but equally, you really want to see him do well and you care about him loads. Is there re this really good way of making you feel this conflicted about a character <laughs> but it's a really good film it's quite funny yeah love that film oh I like Jack Whitehall and his dad go on travels that's just funny it's stupid like you could so tell that most of it's set up but I'm kind of now in love with Jack Whitehall I did a job with him a while back and I'm hoping he doesn't remember that because if I met him again I would try and woo him also, I'd like to marry him just so I could be related to his dad because his dad's so funny. It's probably not ever gonna happen. Finished Vikings. That ended in tears. Started Sons of Anarchy again. I didn't get very far of it the first time round, so I'm absolutely buzzing to be able to watch it again. Jack's oh, so sexy. Who else? What else have we done? I don't know. Oh, me and Danny started watching Twilight. <laughs> It's so bad, but so good. I'm really loving Reels as well on Instagram. I like it better than TikTok. I think in terms of creating, it's so much funner than TikTok because I could be more... For TikTok, I always feel this pressure that you have to kind of follow trends and use all the favourite songs and sounds and stuff. And half of them, I don't even know what they are. At least with Reels, I've got complete creative control because I could use any song that I like. And I like that. That is my life. That's what's been going on. I'm all right though. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Come back.